I just heard this really loud banging on the door and I about had a heart attack because I'm home alone and I thought I was going to be killed, but it turns out that it is just the first box of tool. So yay. It's very light. I wonder if I could do this with one finger. Hello to all 82 of my subscribers. Or was it 81? No, I'm pretty certain it's 82 now, but it was 81 the other day. You see, every day when I check my subscriber count, it keeps changing. This either means that the same person keeps leaving and then coming back again, or that somebody's leaving and then somebody else is coming back, but not coming back because they're joining for the first time. But that is besides the point, because you're not here for my subscriber count. No, you are here for this. But not for this exactly. No, you are here for my artistic rendering of this piece of trash that you can get from Walmart. No, I feel like I should give you a little backstory into why I want to make this costume so badly. You see, I was a homeschooler brought up in a Christian home, so I was never allowed to dress up in said costume, no matter how much I begged my mother. Witches were evil, and well, we couldn't have none of that in my house. Although my mother did end up letting me dress up as a witch, I just wasn't allowed to be the candy corn witch. But I was able to dress up as like a princess witch. One year I was able to dress up as like a ballerina with like witch colors. So you know, I still got to dress up as a witch eventually. My mom came around. But I had to give up on my dream of becoming the candy corn witch. Because by the time my mother had come around, I had just straight up forgotten about the candy corn witch. And as I got older, I also realized that this is kind of a sketchy outfit, something that I really don't want to be wearing. It shows a little too much here, and it shows a little too much there, and it's just not something I would really ever be caught dead in. But a couple of days ago, I was going through my stash of Halloween things, and costumes, and headbands, and hair pieces, and you know what I found? I found this baby right here. Look at it in all of its glory. It's beautiful. And you know what's even more beautiful? That price tag right there. Yes, that's right. I got it on a sale. Anyway, I had kind of forgotten that I had this. Like I hadn't forgotten, but I kind of had forgotten. I immediately thought to myself, I have to be a candy corn witch this year. But instead of being your basic candy corn witch, I decided that I was gonna be real extra, all out. I was gonna have the floofs, the everythings. That's right, I was going to be a candy corn witch floof. I was going to be the candy corn. Plus I was going to wear the cute little witch hat on top. So come along with me on this tool filled adventure. I, it's, it's probably going to be fun. Oh my, my feet look huge. Let's fix that. Package number two has arrived. We are going to be drowning in tool. Oh, that's really orange. Oh wow, this is way not the color that I thought I ordered. I think it's gonna work, but wow, this is orange. Also, look at this cute jacket I got. It's a hand-me-down. I didn't realize it was so long. Look how cool that is. It's gonna keep me so warm. And look, it has a hood. I feel like a magical elf. Alrighty. Got the hoop skirt. I'm gonna put it on my improvised mannequin because I don't own a mannequin. Boom, step one complete. Now if only all the other steps could be that simple. Once you've gone ahead and figured out your base or your undergarments, you'll wanna get out some tool and start draping. But before you get the tool out and start draping, it's really important to back vacuum the floor, vac vacuum the floor? Vacuum the floor because everything sticks to tool. And after you're done vacuuming, well, you're gonna wanna give a mouse a cookie because obvious reasons. Go ahead and drape a ton of tool around the waist of your skirt until you get something nice and full like this. Then you're going to trim off about six inches from the bottom of the hoop skirt, which will leave you with more than six inches of tool. And then it's time to gather and gather some more and some more and some more. Also, is it just me or does it sound like I'm saying s'more? Like the chocolate campfire dessert, just wondering. I had taken two separate gathered pieces to form the skirt and then I sewed them together like you would an 18th century petticoat by having a front tie and a back tie and two slits um, on either hip. 
This yellow skirt that I'm wearing right now is the petticoat or the first layer of the candy corn skirt. I went ahead and I took that bit of tulle we had cut off earlier, folded it in half, and then just sewed it to the bottom. Now it's time to get out the orange tulle. Ahead and I took that tool that I have on the bolt and I cut it in half. Basically I went ahead and I shortened all the pieces to this length here and I'm going to gather that as well just as I did for this. I'm going to make a regular skirt closure with hook and eyes in the back. Instead of having a front piece and a back piece, this is just one continuous piece. And I also took that bolt of fabric and I cut it into three pieces the long way which ended up being three 19 inch pieces, a bit shorter. And you guessed it, it is now time to gather and gather and gather some more, except that I decided to do it by hand because I realized that when I did it by machine, it actually didn't gather as quickly. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I took that yellow fabric and I created the rough on the bottom. I just got home from work and I was really hoping that Cinderella's mice would have come and finished the dress for me because I am sick of dealing with floof, but alas, they have not. Here we have the progress if you can even call that progress, I don't know. I'm not gonna complain because like it was $12 for 40 yards of tool. Along the edges were some holes, but who cares? It's kind of fun to play with. Once I was done gathering all of the floofy fluffy ruffles, I went ahead and I sewed the yellow ruffle to the orange skirt, right sides together. Hello my pretties, it is now time to make the peasant top. I'm not completely done with the skirt yet, but I don't want to do any more work on the skirt right now. All it needs to be done is put in a waistband and sew it up the back anyway, so we can do that later. I am now hiding in the garage. My dear mother is making a pie because I really wanted to make a pie, so I went to the store, I got the ingredients, and now she's making me a pie. Yay! Also, is it just me, or is this like the best part about eating pie? Just look at how it slices into that first little layer. Oh, I just love it. Now she's making cookies because my mother's amazing and she literally, she's great. Anyways, my mom's inside baking, which means kitchen noise, which is really loud. Yeah, every time I bounce up and down, can you see that bit right here? Whoop, whoop. Hold on, let's see if my face. Okay, now there's traffic noise, so I don't know if this is actually a better idea, but maybe. So I know it's important to get started on some of the other pieces and I'm hoping that once I start them, I'll be more motivated to finish them. I have this dress here that I got from a thrift store a few years ago. It's very cute. There is some shirring through it and when I say some I mean a lot because it's all the way through the front and back of the bodice. I guess you could call it shirred. I'm not sure if that's the correct way to... I'm not sure if that's the right way to say shirring. Anyway, it's shirred. So basically there's like stretchy elastic going through it, which gives it this nice bunch look. Basically this just means that I'm going to have to stretch out the top as much as I can before I cut out a pattern based on it. My mom gave me this old pool cover up that she no longer wanted and I thought that it would work perfectly. Although it does smell like sunscreen. So this is roughly what the pieces will look like. You're going to want a front and a back side for both of the sleeves. Then you're going to sew up this little bit here and this side here. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and take the U or the V on your bodice and the U slash V on your sleeve and you're going to sew them right sides together just like this. Now you're going to have a cute bodice like this that has an enormous neck hole and enormous armholes. You can go ahead and just make a rolled hem slash casing around the neck and the armholes. Hello and welcome to Elastic 101. Grab yourself a length of elastic and wrap it around your shoulders like so. Make sure that the elastic connects in the front but isn't too tight around your shoulders. Now grab yourself a second length of elastic. You are going to put this length of elastic around your little shoulders, most commonly known as as arms or something. You will also want to make sure that this elastic is tight enough, but not so tight that it cuts off the circulation and therefore your arm. Once you're done cutting the elastic, you'll have a whole bunch of wiggly little noodles. Go ahead and take a bobby pin and you're going to, that's not called a bobby pin, a safety pin and attach it to the elastic and basically weave it through those channels you made earlier. Uh, you can, in that last clip, you can see the difference between the elasticated sleeve versus the knot. Anyway, here's the bodice. It's pretty self-explanatory. Sorry that wasn't more informative. You can always try slowing the video down, right? Anyway, this is what the bodice looks like when it's on. I wanted to do a puff sleeve like this, but unfortunately I didn't have enough fabric to make it long enough, so I'm going to have to wear it like this. It's okay, but it's not really what I wanted. Here's a little sneak peek of how the dress is coming along. If the thumbnail wasn't a sneak peek enough, it's absolutely massive and swooshy, and it makes me feel like the 2015 Cinderella ball gown. 
gown. Well, it doesn't make me feel like I am the ball gown, but it makes me feel like I'm in the ball gown. The sleeves on the peasant top are a little tight though, and I would like to remake it if I have time before Halloween. And here's the twirl you've all been waiting for. But no, did you really think you were gonna get a twirl? You gotta wait till the end of this video. Now that the peasant top is done, and the skirt is done, well mostly, the skirt's mostly done, we'll just call it done, we can go ahead and start working on the last piece of our garment, which is going to be the cute little decorative black waist corset. Oh, those are the cookies. So I guess you could call it a teensy tiny little problem, but not really too big of a problem because it's not a problem at all because I could always draft a pattern. Pattern that I have for a waist corset, if that's even what you're supposed to call it, maybe call it a waist cincher, but I feel like these are highly decorative and don't actually really do much for the waist. So we'll just call it a waist corset. I have this pattern that I've never used before. I got it from 99 cent pattern sales. And it's not really what I want. I don't think I want that like point on the top and that point on the bottom. And it's also a lace up back corset. I kind of wanted a lace up front corset, so I don't know. The pattern pieces have been cut and really all it did was basically reassure me of the fact that I don't like this waist corset and I, I don't want this one. If I were to make this corset, it would come up to here on me, which is where it comes up to on the model, so I don't know why I thought it would be different on me. Also, maybe you were wondering while you were watching the time lapse, where did that skirt come from? I made it. It's just discounted kind of fabric that I got from Joanne's after Halloween one year. I don't know. Yeah, that, that answers your question, hopefully. So I drafted my own pattern, really liked how it turned out, and decided to use the simplicity pattern anyway. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. Also, check out these super fluffy socks. I'm not going to go into detail on the waist corset because I did just use a pattern that is pretty widely accessible. It's Simplicity 1093. Basically, I just cut off the lower part of this dress and I used that for my pattern pieces. There are a few things I adjusted though. Here you can see the little mock-up I did. Basically, I wanted that front closure and I was going to do what I had to do to get it. Thankfully, it wasn't too hard though because I probably wouldn't have done what I had to do to get it. Also, I just found out that my hair is long enough to do this, so. Looked out the window and it is snowing. Ugh. It is accumulating. Can you see that? It's snowing. It's not even Halloween yet. But snowy weather means making soup, so I had to get soup making. Plus, now that the waist corset is done, all I have left is to put the waistband in the skirt. And I don't want to do that. So. Also, if you happen to drop a piece of carrot on the floor, never feed. You can just feed it to your sister's rabbit. Hey Daisy, you want a num num? Camera shy? Are you camera shy? You're being silly. Come on, baby, it's okay. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's it. There's no more carrots. Are you gonna get brave now? And the costume is done. I finally finished the waistband. And I also made a white slip to put over the hoop skirt. Here you can see it from a wider angle. I went ahead and I paired it with my Halloween tights or pantyhose, I suppose, and some cute black boots that my grandmother had found at a yard sale. And for those of you who are literally just watching this video to see me spin in this dress, well, here you go. And don't worry, I also got a lot of running shots. And when I say a lot, I mean... A lot. Once I had made this dress and actually put it on, it reminded me so much of Cinderella's ball gown. And a dress like this is just begging to be ran in. So when I say a lot, I mean a lot. Like so many that I was actually tired after running.